Paul. So, thank you very much. So, uh, I'm, I'm a medical doctor, and uh, this is a service that uh, we built uh, over a couple of years. Uh, the main thing with building an, uh, an artificial intelligence is obviously getting the images. So, uh, I'm a researcher, so uh, I research uh, in the telemedicine space, which is more like sending images to dermatologists, and dermatologists send you back uh, an answer. So this is a typical case, uh, you know, you wake up like this in any part of the world, even in Barcelona, and you think, uh, what shall I do next? Well, most of us will actually go to the internet and do their own search and try out and find what it is. And, you know, you get like three million results. Uh, the best thing would be, obviously, to go to the doctor, uh, a dermatologist, but there's a three-month waiting list to see a dermatologist. And to see your family doctor, even now, it takes up to a week to see your family doctor. So we developed this app, which was called First Derm, and we released this in 2014. You can download it. Uh, it was an anonymous app. You just upload your image, you put in some data, and then you would send it off to our dermatologist after you would pay. And then within hours, you would then get a response. Uh, what we saw from this service, which is a, a human dermatologist service, was that these were the cases that came in. So we had 45%, which was like of skin rashes, which is dermatitis, acne, folliculitis, 25% that was of moles. And one thing that we didn't expect was that 30% were actually of pictures, which were of embarrassing uh, genitals that were sent into us, because it was an anonymous service, so it made kind of sense. And another interesting point was that 80% that used our service would continuously send in the same kind of diagnosis. So 20 of the skin diagnosis serves 80% of our customers. Uh, users by age, you can see here the average age was about 29 years old, but the ones that would pay for the service was actually uh, averaged 35 years old. So the younger generation, they would send in their images, but when they came to the paywall, would not actually go and pay for it. So here's also a customer support. You know, this uh, a person sent in to us. He wanted to have the cheapest possible, which cost $30, and to have an answer within two days. However, he got the answer within 11 minutes. And he's like, look, I want my money back because your answer was too fast. So that kind of uh, healthcare is really difficult in the sense that to please people, if you're too fast, they don't trust the answer that you give them. So we also developed this de device and tried to make a hardware device which could take high-grade medical images of uh, moles and could detect skin cancer. So we sold this device for $70. And there were quite a few people that bought it, but there was not a scalability in the service, so we kind of left this uh, thing out. So what we, figured, what we figured, yeah, we also worked with family doctors. And the thing with working with family doctors, we thought that they would send in a lot of these queries to us. But on average, a whole practice would only send in five queries per week. So we saw that the problem with telemedicine is that it's a great service, great way to get to the dermatologist quickly. However, people did not want to pay. And actually, when it was in front of them, the, the uptake was not that good. Uh, this is me in San Francisco. We were doing some screening for skin cancer on the average person coming uh, through our booth. And actually, what's interesting here, on 13% of the people that would actually come up to the booth, we actually found some form of skin cancer. So people are walking around in the world with lesions that they don't really go and check, but if there was an opportunity to do it, they would do it. So the market in the dermatology space in the, in the US, this is both visits, uh, prescriptions, and procedures. It's a $75 billion market. And in China, this market is now estimated to be $600 billion in regards of they're very concerned about their skin. Um, so what people want, they want speed, instant quality that's accurate. They want to trust it to get peace of mind and then ultimately, they don't want to pay for it. They always want someone else to pay for it. So coming back to AI, it's, it's a little bit how we started developers. So you can think of a little toddler. Uh, we started feeding in these images, annotated images in a deep neural network. 
we started just doing seven diseases, and we can see that it was learning over time. And then now we're doing 33 skin diseases, and we have another model which is coming out, which is 43. But the interesting thing here with dermatologists, so, which is parallel with machine learning, you see the skin disease, and then you get it back in the visual cortex where you actually remember it. A dermatologist will see about 3,000 patients per year, and they have a lifespan of working in dermatology, which is 30 years. So that's 90,000 skin diseases that they will see uh, in their lifetime. So you can imagine when we feed 350,000 images to a machine learning artificial intelligence, which has the same kind of a learning uh, parallel to a dermatologist, they will learn a lot faster and also be a lot more accurate. So uh, this is also coming back to the, uh, to the AI. There's been a lot of work on this. For example, uh, Stanford Lee Fei Fei, she did a thing called ImageNet, where they have 50 million pictures which have been annotated. And a lot of this has been used into developing these deep neural networks and also, um, also these uh, net uh, databases. Mechanical Turk, which is an Amazon thing where you can upload uh, different images and you can have manual people annotating these images. That has also made the possibility to then start doing these uh, deep neural networks and algorithms which you then need. So for example, here is a leopard and you have people annotating it uh, in Mechanical Turk as a leopard. And then you can use these images then for uh, learning in a deep neural network. So this is a typical architecture, how it would look like, different layers. And this is what we've been experimenting with. And right now, we are in the infancy. So as you can see, it's still much to do. And there will be a time when there will be a maturity where we can't learn that much more. But that's a uh, way, way forward in the, in the future. But what's important for us, who's the first one out there, really, in 33 skin diseases is that we keep ahead of the curve and then we can move faster than our competitors. So for example, our traction to date, so we have 350,000 images. It's the largest, most unique amateur smartphone uh, skin disease database. There's a lot of databases out there which have clinical photos, but that will not give the same results as if you use the mobile phone images which a layman would use or someone with a mobile phone would use. So we do 33 skin diseases now. We're 80% correctly when we have the top three diseases, and we get an answer within five seconds. And we have a mature way of collecting even more images. We're collecting 15,000 dermatology images every single month. So this is our API. So uh, anyone can come to the API. They can see how it, uh, how it works. And then if you want it to work, then you have to do a contract with us. And then you can use it in any kind of a platform. So this is quite interesting. If you see here this QR code. So do anyone have like your mobile phones? So I learned this when I was in China. So you can just open your camera. And when you open your camera, you will actually come directly to our website where we have this skin image search, which I will do a demonstration of right now. So here, you would basically just, I will see, let's see where my cursor is. Yeah, so this is a skin image search. So this is like our kind of demonstration that our API works. So it's free, you don't have to pay. So you would then take, uh, either you take a picture, or you would then take, uh, upload a picture from your server. Uh, let's say we can take, uh, uh, let's say we take uh, herpes, for example, right? So herpes, we can take that. And we only do AI on the first image, but since we want to collect more images, we want them to take another picture so we can collect twice as many images. So here you go, and then you would just check it, and then you would just search. So now the images are going up to our database, and then you will get a research back. So here it says herpes simplex, and you can see how fast it was. And then we also give you the top for differential diagnosis. So doctors, they always work with hypothesis, always differential diagnosis, and this is how we also train it on. So here, for example, if it's herpes simplex, then you can click on that, you can come to our website, and then you can read more information and see more pictures about the skin disease, and then make your 
you will take the uh, informed uh, decision uh, your, yourself. So this is already in, uh, in five languages. So this works in Spanish, it works in Italian, German, uh, Swedish, and so forth. Going back to the presentation, let me see here, cursor. Uh, back to the presentation. Late. So going back to the presentation, here's like a, a case study like showing how good this AI is. So this is like two spots taken, right? So you might not read very clearly, but it says it's a nevus, a typical nevus, seborrheic keratosis, dermal, and a malignant melanoma. So it's kind of ranks that. So what I did, I took each of these out of the, the photo, and it actually says it's a seborrheic keratosis. And the other one is actually a mole. And these are actually the two correct diagnoses, but the AI is actually looking at both of them and taking both of the diagnoses into the AI. So it's quite interesting. So this is also obviously something which is, could be shortcoming of the layman using it. When they take a picture, they think they're taking a picture of just one disease, but there might be something in the background which is disturbing it. Uh, one thing which is interesting, we uh, have integrated our AI. So you can change to the uh, phone. So we have integrated the, the AI into the, the Chinese uh, WeChat. Let's see if we can come up for the demo. So, to, you can always make an account with Tencent, get an account with Tencent, and you can be in the, is it working? So you can always make an account with Tencent, but you would be mostly in the Eng English version. It took us six months to get into the mainland Tencent account, which is only in Chinese. So here, for example, uh, you would then search our account, and our account here, it says IDOC24, for example. And the Chinese letters there is basically Dermatology Artificial Intelligence AI. So when you're a Chinese person and you search in Tencent or in WeChat, our service comes up. So here I can show, so for example, same thing here. You would either take a picture or you would upload a picture from your, uh, your, uh, your phone. So let me see. Uh, let me see here. You can see here, we take this one, full image. So this one is now running up. We will back in a second with results. And then the AI will then push uh, five top answers, what it thinks it could be. So here, there's 90% chance that this is pretterized adversity color and then you have the differential diagnosis as well. So here, the same thing, you can then also press this, and then you come in to see more pictures of Pertivarius diversity color, and then you can read more about that disease. You can take back to the computer now. Yep. So we have a team of uh, advisors and investors behind this who are dermatologists and who are also in the know-how of uh, artificial intelligence. The interesting thing, of course, is Google. They're working on something similar to this. Uh, they, uh, we have been approached by them that they wanted to uh, work with us and do research. And uh, we would obviously give all our pictures to them, and then they would do the research. But uh, we didn't agree to that. Uh, we tested their, good, their image search on the internet. You can upload something in there. If you go on image.google.com, you can upload an image, and you can see it's not that accurate right now. But where, I don't know, but I suspect is where they are using their artificial intelligence is actually for their own pictures, their own, um, their own uh, SEO. So when people upload pictures and they're in it, annotated correctly, they use their AI to take those images which are annotated incorrectly and then have a better user experience with better uh, results resembling these diseases that you would search for. 
Uh, an interesting thing here is uh, in San Francisco. So uh, when I was there, uh, there was a friend of mine. Uh, she receives uh, these uh, images from, from men, and she, for some reason she enjoys them. Uh, but there was one that she was uns uncertain about. She thought that maybe there was an STD. So I told her, look, why don't you use our service? And she actually used our service, and it said that it was not an STD, that it was just something called a sebaceous gland. So we've seen now there's quite a lot of teenagers using our service on these under-the-belt concerns uh, and getting instant results. Uh, and this has led to our first kind of a partnership that we're working on, is that um, uh, these uh, websites that sell these online uh, STD kits, uh, you can go online, you can buy these kits, they will send it to your home, uh, you will take either the saliva slab or you will pee in a bucket and then you will send it back and then through their lab they will then send you your answers and this is a kind of an anonymous service. So if you have a look here on, on, on the right hand side they have like a chat thing and this is where for example it would be great to have our API integrated here so they would say okay what kind of issue you have, take a photo upload it, they would get like a diagnosis of what it can be, an answer of what it can be, and then there's parameters that they can choose what products to buy, which can be then more lab uh, verified. So since I love these QR codes, so this is my LinkedIn profile, so you know if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, <laughs> you just scan it. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to uh, answer them. Thank you.